recording. It is, what is it? November the 5th, 2022, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Yes, we're all back with uh, more stuff. <laughs> I'm, more I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm just slightly confused today, but never well, mind. Uh, me. Let me tell you a story to help ease your confusion. And because tonight, uh, tonight is Guy Fawkes Night, which is a traditional night in the UK uh, where we celebrate somebody who tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. Why we celebrate that? that by building bonfires, building effigies of that person. His name was Guy Fawkes, throwing them on top of the bonfire and burning him. And that's, that's a national <laughs> celebration we do every year on the 5th of November. And it's always History. accompanied by fireworks. History. And yeah. people lose fingers and stuff. They're yeah. talking about maybe substituting uh, Boris Johnson. <laughs> all the harm he it's, did. It's, that's another element of the national pastime is who should we burn on the bonfire this year? It's always a good, a good there's, topic. There's a lineup. <laughs> History and the way we celebrate history, I think every country has their weirdnesses there. So, so I hope I've um, solved your confusion for you because it's a perfectly yeah. straightforward story, of course. Of course it is. Of course History it is. as literature, which is really what it is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So today, what we're not going to talk about how each of us um, is... <laughs> How all our countries what are we do up weird to? things. What are we up to? What, what are we up to? That is the thing, Adrian. You brought this up. What are we up to? And uh, what are the things that are, yeah, that are on our minds right now? That our projects, our interests right now. So yeah, just um, a chance to catch up. Yes, each of us has brought a few little things to show and talk about. And Adrian, we'll kick this off with you and a very colorful picture ah yeah okay so this is uh, a project that i'm just starting out on to put a bit more effort into i've had a couple of images hanging around for months and months and months and i've been collecting materials which is also a good thing when i tell you what the project is so i don't have a proper title for it yet but they're working so th this is a, by the way this is a visual kind of segment again so oh, yes. uh, video is the video link is right at the top <laughs> of the show notes yeah so i'll explain the images as we go but this is uh, this is a project that has a, a working title at the moment which is very uninspiring it's just called confectionery and the idea behind this is it's it's part digital art part physical art and the, the the starting position is to go out to the shop and buy a bar of chocolate it can be any bar of chocolate as long as it's a recognizable brand so i look forward I mean, to traveling I mean, the this, world this, this project is an excuse for you to go and buy bars of chocolate yeah all over the world yeah totally i will be yeah, all over I, the world and, okay. and, and by Why the way not? It, we should describe the image that we are seeing right now as a um, detail macro photograph of part of a label of a Cadbury dairy chocolate. Yeah, it's dairy milk chocolate. Yes, a very famous bar of chocolate here in the UK, um, yeah. which is why it's, a, it's a, why it's a project that will travel so nicely because I could go all around the world and I could buy chocolate and, and other things in different parts of the world and do the and do the project everywhere. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So the, are you are you asking our listeners to send you chocolate? Is that what this is about? <laughs> that, that would be a good thing too. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would save on airfares, I suppose, wouldn't it? And and environmental issues. So uh, the the idea here is is that it's it's a, a thing that's going to be built up in layers. So the bottom layer of, of this, we're at the image phase at the moment. So this image is a black and white photo. It's a very crunchy black and white photo of a chocolate bar, uh, and the layer above that is a coloured gradient. Now, this particular chocolate bar is mostly just purple, right? So there is, uh, yeah, the, the, the gradient I've placed over it is, is basically just purple. Um, uh, but others, of course, have different colours and you end up with a, yeah, you, know, you can have a, a gradient with two or three stops on it with different colours at each place. And you could do radial, you could do linear, that sort of thing. The idea is I'm colouring outside the lines. Um, and then beyond that, so that's the, that's the digital art bit, if you like. And then the idea that I'm playing with at the moment, and I'm not quite should sure. I, should I mute to... you, Jeremiah? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Please continue while yes, I we will. let my dog in. But please continue. 
The idea is that this also becomes a three-dimensional thing in some way. And I think what I'm playing at is maybe having a print of it where some of it's 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 printed, maybe you know, mounted on cardboard at different levels. So maybe the chocolate bar itself stands out from the base of the print. Maybe it then gets lacquered or resined or something like that and, ah, and framed and, and posi- yeah, sort of built up as so, a three-dimensional tile, perhaps. Are we looking at like a final result being a big... Well, I don't know, one meter by one meter print of sorts, or is this more of, of a tiny tile kind of thing? So it's a, it's a, I don't think it's going to be tiny. Um, I'm not intending it to be tiny, but maybe not one meter by one meter because it's deliberately yeah, a close up, this, this particular one, and I think most will be. I mean, so who has that wall space? It <laughs> might be, it might be, uh, it might be framed. It might sort of be, it might be one of these ones where you color outside the lines of the frame as well. You know that, you know, so, so that everything gets the the, the color treatment somewhere. Uh, I need to work with my wife on this one as well because she's the 3D art and craft person. So, so that'll be a nice project too. Uh, so this is all just in the thinking stage at the moment. I'm just collecting the digital images. Um, and uh, here, this one, this one is a, a second one to share. Um, this is a bag of Skittles, uh, and you know, as everybody knows, the Skittles uh, tagline is "Taste the rainbow." At least it is in many English-speaking countries. So this one has a rainbow gradient across it. Uh, so, so the idea, so uh, as I say, with the digital imaging phase at the moment, uh, need to work out how it is that going to make these three dimensional. Uh, uh, and the idea being that you could hang them on a wall. You might have uh, a set of three, perhaps. You know, three. You, know, you could do this internationally. So you know, there could be a UK set, a European, you know, European set. Although I guess European would have to potentially go country by country to make it specific to people. Uh, you could have all sorts of stuff. Uh, and uh, maybe they get printed and framed. May I don't know. Maybe thirty centimeters or a foot square or something like that. Be the outside of the frame. That's kind of where I'm thinking at the moment. But it's going to be a good one for the winter holidays, I think, and stuff like that. And it brings a lot of color in when the days are gray. It's cool. Can I ask you what you're using? Um, I don't think you use Photoshop, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, so for the base layer, it is my trusty Olympus TG6 point and shoot camera with a, a black and white filter on it to get that base level photograph. But I also capture uh, of, of the, the packaging uh, a color image so that I can sample that and get all the right colors so that it looks. I'd like the colors to be obviously not realistic, but I'd like them to be you know, recognizably representative of what the thing really looks like in the real world. So that, because uh, I think that will be part of triggering the memory and, and triggering the, 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 the feeling of people when they see their, yeah, their favorite childhood candy or whatever it might be, you know, uh, or their favorite adult candy, of course. No, but are, are you using software to put it all together? Yeah, so at the moment I am using Affinity Photo. So the, uh, the the stage I've got to is there's two main layers in, in, in a file. One is the black and white base layer and the other is a, a color gradient layer. There is some fine tuning layers around the edges, you know, maybe that yeah, maybe a radiant uh, a radial gradient doesn't quite cut it and I need to put you know some st- stuff in around the sides and things like that just to get get it how I want it to be. So I'm kind of going to be building up with layers. Uh, and of course, you've got not to lose the the image underneath it. So it, uh, the blend mode of those layers is quite important. I'm tending to use either vivid light or hard light at the moment as a blending layer um, to to build up those colours without losing the image underneath it. Uh, and uh, we'll see where we get to. So that's the technology I, side of it so far. I think that uh, maybe at some point uh, for a future episode, we could discuss what um, blending modes would we want that are not available to us that's a nice idea yeah yeah. (laughs) that okay oh this is a good one i like this and i might need to pick your brains both of you on um luminosity masks because with the black and white a lot of the the writing on these packages is going to come out white and i've not got a lot of experience with luminosity masks so i think i'm going to have some of this color tempered by a luminosity mask so that you can keep the whiteness or almost the whiteness of uh, of the text on this packaging yeah with luminosity masks you can set your level whatever you want yeah i'm kind of thinking it's like an audio (laughs) compressor right or something like that if you don't want to hit the highlights too hard right exactly and and you could you know you could mask sections of it Mm. So you can overlay sections of it as well. 
but it's a bit of fun and it means on a today here in the uk it's been really dark it's been raining all day and it's just one of those it's a precursor of winter it's not winter yet here but you know, most of the leaves are still on the trees but it's a precursor of what those long winter you know nights are going to be like and i think if i can have you know some stuff to do as a project over that time it's going to be a bit of fun that sounds awesome um jeremiah you brought <coughs> this what is it is it a photo uh, <laughs> well we're looking at a photo right now but um i'll the, the process is so let me, let me just let me describe this we are looking at a bluish back drop and on that is a square with a circle in the middle and some interesting shapes almost looks like a star map around it with a weird alien artifact in the middle something along those lines uh yeah that's one way of putting it <laughs> <laughs> well that's, that, uh, uh, that's my interpretation <clears throat> again I'll, I'll kind of uh, drift off my um my kind of self-aggrandizing um, <laughs> pick from last week, which is my own website, and in this particular folio, which is available absolutely free to viewers to look at and visit at tinroof.studio, is, is a microphage. This is a collection of what appears to be uh, turn-of-the-century, um, and I'm talking about 19th century, microscopic, photographs of different cellular divisions and evolutions so that's that's the intense what appears to be you said. what appears to be yeah so there, there's uh, I have a collection of these and they're they're quite fascinating um, in their own right electronically what you're what I'm now doing is taking it and printing it and I've been experimenting with different kind of print uh, papers um, what we're looking at here is a photograph of the final print. All right. Uh, it's unframed. The bluish cast is really a, what, what appears to be a uh, residue from the, uh, from the snap that I took on my iPhone, but it is, in fact, printed on vellum. Oh, okay. Um, the photograph... Uh, so, so that's what you can kind of see a little undulation in the paper there. Uh, eventually, it'll be pretty flat once I get the moisture out. Uh, the origin of it came from, um, again, this kind of, um, you know, the work that I do, which is kind of melding kind of false representations of reality or true representations of false realities <laughs> or... Um, <laughs> You know, a sort of made up, um, invented science, which is kind of um, inviting one to kind of think about uh, planets, cells, and the kind of origins of man. Um, and that started with kind of developing certain prompts. In this case, this was uh, Mid Journey. Um, which I then refined with all kinds of adjustments over uh, the course of two or three weeks. So prom then, prompt engineering, pretty much. Very much so. Um, and then, of course, beyond the prompt, those of us who are familiar with AI machine uh, learning and its relationship to adjustments is how many times, how many steps, what kind of tests, what kind of evolution you want, how close to the prompt, what you add to it, et cetera, et cetera. That's a subject for another day. But in this case, um, I was very, very pleased with the, the final output. Now, um, you know, what I've done uh, in the past often is take digital imagery and then use traditional um, printing methods or even sculpting methods. I mean, last year I did a, uh, a kind of 3D printed bas relief of some of landscapes, mountain landscapes that I had done uh, in that case in World Creator, Unreal Engine, took the wireframe, had them printed. Is it your phone, uh, Jeremiah? Um, Can you my, mute that? I, I did. It's my, <laughs> it's my watch. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> the phone is not beeping and it's <laughs> somebody anyway you, uh, you figure it out. <laughs> this is so postmodern problems You'll figure so it out <laughs> i will eventually here we go uh silence 
Silence. Silence. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do Please forgive okay, me. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Sorry for the interruption. Um, uh, so I did a 3D version and uh, gold leafed it a s small six inch mountain landscape. It turned out very well. I've taken images that I've done in 3D uh, wireframe um, and then had them printed uh, with or I printed them with traditional gravure. And I've been doing this kind of thing my whole artistic life, coating stones with emulsion and using traditional lithography and photography. So this, um, after a lot of experimentation with uh, Japanese papers, traditional photo papers, I settled on vellum, uh, very, very light uh, coating of ink because it smudges very, very easily. And then uh, the back of the image is gold leafed. And so the highlight luminance, which you get a sense of here, uh, but in real life is very dazzlingly gold. Printed on gold leaf, so to speak. So, it, well, it's printed on vellum, and then I yeah. hand, I ha gold leaf the back, uh, which takes a little bit of um, <laughs> specific techniques. <laughs> um, and then with masking and, and whatnot, and, and then... Uh, did this the the image this image is about five inches square but I'm I'm going to do this a little smaller and um, uh, and and do a series of them that are quite small matted and framed so th there's a kind of beautiful preciousness to them and the the size and I I like to work large but here I feel that this the the small aspect ratio, the, the kind of contained aspect of the image, feels better for the intention of the work, which is kind of slides and um, scientific. So you have right. to really lean in. And, and so this is, this is the first iteration of something that I'll probably be showing. Uh, I, I, I have a feeling in 24 at an exhibit. Um, yeah, because this thing, it takes a long time, but the, the image output is absolutely, I mean, it's really, really beautiful. Yeah, and the, and the picture, that the snap that you took of it doesn't do it any justice. No, it doesn't do no. it justice. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. So it's it's just an indication of of a process, um, you know, that uh, that I've been kind of experimenting with is the, th that relationship between digital work and the hand or feel of the artist on it so that it and because this starts with ai and yeah there's so much discussion about oh it's so cold it's so machiney it's so you know you just push a button this really turns that argument on its head i mean it yeah. really feels uh human created um with a lot of tradition involved so and and i'm also about to embark on uh, the integration of encaustics with these kinds of works, and uh, that's a, another technique where where dyed wax is applied to the surface of images, and and, and it gives it a slight dimension dimension to it. It's quite beautiful. Interesting stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, there you go. So Chris, what so, have you been up to? Well, uh, two <laughs> things. First of all, I've uh, I've worked to put my setup back together so <laughs> for stuff. those who watch the video now it's now looking better again <laughs> and uh, that involves uh, being in a standing position now which changes the dynamics a bit so this involves changing the camera setup around and stuff so um, that's that's the photographic one and then there's a pseudo photographic one that I've been embarking on and I've been spamming our group chat with photos with photos and air quotes um and and you know so let me let me let me um let me start with um have you ever been at a wedding or something where they had one of these modern photo booths set up mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. A, a box with a camera in it and sure. uh and, and a and a, a a box of hats and glasses and things and then you have an ultra wide angle lens and you go ha and press a button and then it spits out a funny photo of you um, so the dress-up is kind of fun and uh, 
putting a mask on is kind of fun. And that combined with AI, um, that's where it gets interesting. Now, the problem is if you try to take a, to, to generate a picture of yourself or of anything specific with an AI, it is really hard. And uh, Jeremiah, you can attest to that. The prompt building is is a process and you, you you hone it in and you change that little bit and all of a sudden you get a completely different result and then it's yes. a, it's more it's a art subset. at this point. It's, it's a subset of the AI skill yeah. is to get a representation of a person, especially a non-famous so person. The, the thing is, of yeah. course, people are in the data set. So if you want to take, uh, if you want to create or generate a picture of Brad Pitt in sitting on a green mushroom, then yeah, that is clearly possible, because there's lots of pictures of Brad Pitt in the in the data set. But if you want to take a picture of a specific person that is not in the data set as in maybe yourself, then that is a bit more difficult. Now, there's a, um, there's a system called Dream Booth, um, which is open source. It's on GitHub. You have to be very technical to use it, where you can train uh, on a set of pictures that you provide and then kind of marry it with the stable diffusion data uh, model, and then you can have yourself or whatever um, pictures you put in there. Uh, in there, and uh, there's a service now called Astria.ai, Astria.ai, where someone made, wow, weird sounds coming through today, um, <laughs> where someone m made that easier to use for the rest of us, which is a web-based service. You, you uh, throw in 5, 10, 20, 30 pictures of, well, I uploaded pictures of myself, selfies mainly, or pictures of myself from different angles and different uh, facial expressions, different light situations. And you end up um, having an, an, a stable diffusion model that now can generate pictures of you. And um, I have, uh, I've chosen three to show here. So this is, um, <laughs> Rembrandt. This is what a Rembrandt painting of myself would look like. And, and, and what prompt did you use? Um, oh, don't! Yeah, I, th I think it was just a Rembrandt painting of myself. In, in other words, once it's trained and uploaded, then you can just go. It knows you. You know, you, you have a keyword that you put in there. In this case, the, the, there's like a, they suggest a keyword SKS plus something that you choose, so it has to be unique. And I made this SKS man, so in the data set, I'm referenced as the SKS man. It's really so good. The prompt really was beautiful. S SK uh, was was a was a, a Rembrandt painting of SKS man, and then it spits out, I think, eight of them for you, and you get to choose the best ones. And uh, so, so that was that was a surprisingly good result. And of course, I went uh, to different prompt building sites. There's like Lexica.art, for example, that allows you to build or to choose now to browse pictures and then see what prompts they use so you can uh, so you can quickly get to a result and uh, you get to throw in a lot of stuff so um here's one that i took <laughs> which is a which is a very well it almost looks like a warrior slash hopeless person slash uh whatever a very rough black and white high contrast photo but it's clearly me yeah. Just it is clearly it's really interesting actually because that one that one is interesting because it's clearly you but it's given you different hair it's given you facial yep. tattoos it's given you all sorts of things going on yep. there yeah yeah so, so yeah the the the, the it, it's 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 addictive it's very addictive to <laughs> play with it a third one here that's um more of a digital art painting kind of thing again weird hair that's what was in the prompt um, also, you can clearly see the AI is still not good at doing hands, but it's you, have, you distinctly have five fingers at least in that shot. In weird <laughs> angles and in ways they bend in ways that hands don't bend. So, yeah. anyway, it, it's uh, Astria AI is is amazing for several reasons. First of all, now you can well, let's say amazing and scary because now you can yeah take any selfie of you or create any selfie of you, but it's not limited to you. I mean, you could upload pictures of, I don't know, your favorite enemy and create very <laughs> not so fortunate pictures of them. Or if you 
are a company that makes things, you could use that for product photography. So you uh, upload pictures of your product and then you can generate as many pictures as you like of that product in different light situations, in different settings. Um, let's say a hat on different people's heads or uh, a widget that certain people are holding or that's lying in the grass or in sand or I don't know. So what they've done is they've they taken it. a collab basically and put a front end on it and it pretty much and that's created the ability to train a model right. on whatever you want in a limited so, way. It is not free. You can <clears throat> um, initially it was five bucks for a training run, and but you can download the model. So if you have the hardware at home to run it, you can do it. I actually do it on my M2 MacBook Air. Um, it runs on here. So um, th then they changed the price and it went to twenty bucks, dollars, euros, pounds to uh, to do a training run, and now I think it's down to ten or something. Along so, those lines, uh, so they Chris, changed it around a bit. Um, <clears throat> I registered for it. Um, I haven't used it yet. Um, but I did notice you can run it from the cloud, which I assume that's where the model is. It's web-based. So you yeah. run it run it on your desktop yeah. or on your mobile. But, but there is a pull-down menu, and that pull-down menu would be uh, on your own model that you would train on your own machine, right? Um. Yeah. And they have a little M1 adjustment clicker something. There's yeah, you can you can set up a few a few details there. Um what I did is uh, I ran a few of these online um because that that 10 20 dollars includes um rendering pictures, creating pictures. I think up to a few hundred so you have plenty of uh, room to play with. But then you have this uh, this model file uh, or so-called checkpoint file, and I downloaded that one, so that runs on my laptop now. Which what again, what's is interesting wild. is when you start to combine these, uh, because what I didn't talk about with that um, image that I had shown on myself is, I took that into Photoshop, Lightroom, yeah. Gigapixel, and I I really worked with that. Some of the images require more work and some less. But that combination, and you could layer it any way you want and really adjust sure. it to bring out the best in terms of the uh, final final image. Um, so I'm, I'm a great believer on that synthesis of actual photography and machine learning um, in terms of editing. I think that really, really does uh, help fuse the kind of fingerprints. And... Um, it will be also very, very interesting, the first uh, camera manufacturer that integrates AI into their device. That's, yeah. You know it, that's coming. It is bound to happen. All, also, I think the implications are clear for product photography. At least some of the product photography will go this way. Yes. There's no well, doubt about that. Uh, automobile, uh, you know, when I made commercials oh. uh, back in the day, uh, I shot uh, car commercials, you know, we used to go with rigs of trucks and go into Monument Valley and, and it, you know, it was a very big operation to yep. polish up the trucks and wait for the right light. Now, basically, you have number one, th then they graduated to sort of a, an actual, wa uh, I would call it a live mechanical skeleton of a car where you can adjust the wheel span and the length and then they would just skin it with the actual model of the car that you're shooting so you could shoot anywhere you wouldn't you wouldn't need and to digitally skin it so digitally skin it yeah and then they did away with that completely because yeah. now the cars are indistinguishable from the photograph cars oh. if you open if you open an ikea catalog all every single picture in there is rendered they're yes. not real anymore but uh, there's something I got on some kind of mailing list. I don't know. I never signed up for it. That is uh, called um, CG backgrounds. And they're all, you know, 4K uh, running backgrounds of, you know, a highway off Oregon or Monument Valley or all of that stuff. So you just basically shop for the backgrounds, integrate it. You can adjust the HDR, which is the lighting on yep. it. Throw in your digital car, and boom, uh, doesn't cost very much compared to what we used to spend. But 
here here it's even different because you you take pictures of your car just 360 degree pictures of your car yeah, throw them nerf, in there train the model <laughs> train the model and then tell it uh, place the place the car on a highway in utah and yeah. uh make sure there's big monumental mountains in the background you know well have you tried that with your own image in other words output the image upload it say to anything you can outpaint like a dolly 2 or nowadays stable diffusion i think their models have one on yeah i haven't Photoshop. haven't haven't gone that deep just yet but um, and then say, you know what i mean put put your there. face on a on a body on the moon, whatever you want to do, and uh, that should work fine. Yeah. So that's what I've been playing with. <laughs> that's it's, certainly the future. It's visual. It's not photographic mostly, but it's visual. And uh, yeah. But it uses yeah. a photographic sensibility, and I think that that's, that's part of... It, it uses photos. Photography. It uses photographs as a base uh, material for training, so... Yeah, and the aesthetic go. approach that we all have in terms of how we react yeah. uh, to images and have an intention to create images. Uh, a camera capture is one way. Um, you know, a, a film capture is another way. A digital capture, uh, a reflected a photo of a photo of a photo, and, and, and we go with right. software. But it all begins with that kind of intention and aesthetic, which is, yeah, we don't want to see oil paint on our images. I mean, maybe we do, but um, it really does focus the mind on what is photography, which is a continual discussion among artists, among photographers and purists and non-purists. And I always now think that photography is... Um, it, yes, it's, it started with the reflection of light through lens and, and capturing that, camera obscura, etc. But, you know, is, is drawing from a camera obscura a photographic process? Well, it's, one could argue it is. Um, it doesn't really matter. Who knows? It, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Who knows? We, we, we Who press knows? on into the future. <laughs> All right. Speaking of the future, let's talk about our picks of the week. Adrian, you brought us a book. Ah, uh, yes. A book I received uh, in the post this week. I haven't had time to do it justice yet, but just flicking through it. Um, it, it just th This is a book um, made by some friends of mine, actually. It's called Photo Photography Through the Pandemic, and it's a book that collects together from, I think, 50 different artists, uh, photographs that they made during the pandemic with some stories from them about you know, what that mm. meant to them. Um, it just, just opening it underscored for me that actually there are far few better ways to gain inspiration around photography than through a photography book a lot, uh, yeah, m many if not all of these people will have had um you know online social media presences but i don't do social media for photography really and it lacks a certain something for me um but seeing these printed out nicely in a book um just immediately i opened it i just thought wow yes this is the way i like to to experience some th you know, things this was this a, a great way to be inspired for photography um but uh yeah I, I don't think the book is purchasable at the moment because it was a kickstarter project but uh it's one that i uh, i will thoroughly enjoy beautiful physical physical art oh yeah who would have thought um another physical book jeremiah you recommend the apollo remastered Yes. Ultimate the, photographic record. Th this is a dazzling uh, tome, um, not cheap, but I, I did buy. I did order it when they announced it. They have taken all of the most the fabulous work that these astronauts had done in the early days of the Apollo program, and cleaned these negatives and. Uh, recolored them, remastered them, and they are <laughs> they are fantastic. Uh, this is a very, very strong book, and and sometimes we are um, we take often some of these for granted now that the you know the space program has been with us for a long time. But remember, these are some of the very first 
that um, that were taken, and you could only get into the mindset of how these astronauts saw the world at this moment, some of the first, and these are very strong images, all done with that very famous Hasselblad. So, yeah, nice. and just just think about it. we haven't been on the moon in 50 years. That's right. So, back soon, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Very soon. All right. Um, thank you. Chris. What I'm bringing to you is something. Something big is coming. Um, there is a teaser that just dropped the other day. Uh, today is the 5th of November. And uh, there's a teaser out there, a teaser video on the Affinity or Serif Affinity website. Um, and uh, the... I think he's he's the boss. He's he's teasing that something big is coming and claims that something about more power and a fluid workflow and next level and new ways of working. Everything you want in a creative suite. So that's a jab at Adobe there um, because that's what they call their suite. And then he ends it with one more thing. Something we know you've been waiting for. Which, which makes me think about is that finally the long anticipated lightroom killer the the digital asset management system oh, is that okay. is that a lot of ai integration are they catching up on that side is that maybe even a video centric thing so that would anyway sound interesting yeah the thing that i thought about is possibly uh, one of the things that they've had on their website for ages uh, which i would love to get my hands on is affinity publisher for ipad I don't think that's what this is about. It seems bigger than that, doesn't it? It seems but bigger than that. But again, it's a teaser. Mm -hmm. uh, well, today is Who the knows? 5th of November. They are going to announce that on, or they are going to re reveal whatever it is on the 9th of November, which is when this episode releases. So we might be completely off track here. I have no idea what this really means. Um, but I've been a user of uh, Serif's Affinity Suite for since it came out pretty much. And uh, it's. I know a lot of people who are not happy with the with Adobe's um, uh, subscription model. Have switched over. My brother is a professional graphic designer. He hasn't touched Adobe in years. So um, it's a, it's a competition, and I think Adobe needs competition. So, so they, they have to say their latest updates are. Oh, they Pretty are doing great work, but they do need competition. That's, Everybody needs uh, competition, don't yes. they? Yeah, I mean, a Lightroom doesn't really have a you know, way to organize. There's no comp com competitor to to Lightroom right now. Oh, and, and people and people have, have years and years and years of editing history, metadata history in their Lightroom catalog. So yes, if, if you've been uh, an early user of Lightroom, then it's... Just from that point of view, very very difficult to uh, to leave that ecosystem. So yeah, if they were clever, they'd make a porting. Yeah, so API, th right? someone else tried that and it didn't work out that well. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm curious. I'm really curious. Um, maybe next week we'll be all like or shrug and go okay <laughs> if, yeah it's no a publisher idea. for ipad <laughs> hey maybe it is publisher for ipad hey i'll be i'll be happy with that because then you can the, the, then you can create layout and send stuff off to print just working on an ipad natively that'd be cool wouldn't that be nice i'd be happy with that yeah no it's 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 bigger for sure for sure well we'll we'll see we'll see maybe maybe uh, well we'll see we'll see all right, that brings us to the end of our episode. We um, we've had fun putting this together. It was the the, the whole playful nature of of, um, of the things that I've been playing with and that you guys have been playing with. Thanks for sharing that. That's really good. So yeah, it's fun. We are the future of photography, and we'll be back in a week, I guess. Right? Usually. Yeah. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Not sure in which constellation, but... Anyway, now now that the video production suite is back up and running, um, I think we're all set. You can, of course, find us online at thefuturephotography.com. We are on Twitter at TFOBNOW. And with that, thanks, everyone, for being here. Till next time. Bye. Bye
You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.